Good morning, all. It is wonderful to be with each of you on this first Sunday of Lent at UCY. And it is good to have you here to help us be church this morning. We are a church of many traditions, beliefs, and journeys, and we welcome you each to use the Sunday morning time in whatever ways that help you to feel grounded and refreshed. So if that means to have your camera on or off to Go ahead and eat your breakfast on the call. Whatever that is most comfortable for you is welcome this morning at worship. You are also welcome to follow along in our virtual bulletin, which you can find in a link posted in the chat, or follow along with the text that will be posted in the chat box throughout the service. This Sunday, we are excited to have our liturgical coordinator, Phoebe Oler, preaching this morning. She's going to bring a great word for us. I just know it. So it'll be wonderful to hear from her. And we will also enjoy beautiful music, including a live a cappella trio for our anthem, which will be wonderful. And we will mark our first Sunday in Lent. So Lent looks and feels very different this year as we begin this season. It's kind of like going into the wilderness and what's ahead is unknown. Some of us may feel ready to take on the season with new practices and commitments, and some of us may not really know where to start. So wherever you are this morning, and whatever you have to give this morning is enough in God's eyes. And now as we go into worship together, please unmute and join me in our invocation. I will read the parts that say one, and I invite you to read out loud the parts that say all. Let us worship. Lent calls us to new paths and practices, following wherever God leads us. Lent calls us to trust God and us where we are and receives us with love. Lent calls us to pray for a world where the suffering is relieved and the oppressed are set free. Lent calls, Lent calls us, us, us to live justly and to share God's love with all the creation. Lent calls us to accept that we live imperfectly, that we fail to treat ourselves and our neighbors as holy. Lent calls, Lent calls us, us to us receive forgiveness and to believe our God's imperfections, imperfections for good things. For good things. Lent calls us to faithful living, to praise the one who gives us life. Lent calls us to take up our cross and to hold on to the one who bears them with us. Let us worship God who journeys with us. Today and every Amen. Amen. Now please remute and join me in singing our opening hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights.
Good morning. We now move into a time of confession. Um, this is a Lenten practice we will be doing every Sunday throughout Lent. For Lent is a season that reminds us, as we said in our call to worship, and as we were reminded on Ash Wednesday, of our mortality and the ways we consistently fall short of living fully into all God that calls us to, into loving our neighbors, into loving ourselves, and to loving God. Now, we know that God already knows our sin, for God knows us better than we know ourselves, and God loves us fiercely in the midst of that, in the midst of those imperfections. And yet there is something sacred about bringing our imperfections, and not all imperfections are sin, to be clear, <laughs> and bringing our sins and the ways that we have fallen short to God and saying, you know what, God, I want to lay these at your feet because I need your help in moving forward. So we're going to do that together as a community each Sunday throughout Lent. Um, we'll remain muted since it's a bit of a long confession and it would get gobbledygook to say it together, but we will bring our confession together as a community first. Then there will be some silence where you're welcome to bring your confessions on your own to God. And then Ben will lead us in a sung response. Um, he'll sing it three times through and we invite you to join for the second and third time. Together, trusting that God loves us and forgives us always, let us come together in confession. Oh God, we long to find renewal in you. Forgive us for the times when we have underestimated the power of your saving grace and relied on our own strength and understanding. Forgive us that we have forgotten how to trust. As we begin this Lenten journey, help us to remember that we need not walk this road alone. Forgive us for overlooking the needs of our neighbors. We make excuses and become too focused on our own to-do lists. Help us to slow down and focus on the simple things you have placed before us. Merciful God, open our eyes that we might see, speak to us that we might understand, embolden us to serve you and serve one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. And now let us continue in personal prayer. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ben Farabee, and I will be singing this morning's Kyrie. I will sing it three times, once by myself, and then twice with you. And so I invite you to sing with me um, when that time comes. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie
Children of God, hear the good news. Jesus came not to condemn us, but to love us, save us, and show us the way. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Elliot Kramer. I wear many hats at UCY. I'm liturgical ministries group member, choir member, and I'm doing a PhD in history. And this morning I'll be reading to you uh, from the first letter of Peter, chapter three, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ang Harrod and I am a lecturer in the music department at Yale. And uh, I've been a member of UCY for some years now. And I'm a member of the liturgical ministries group. And I have a reading here from the Gospel of Mark, chapter one, verses nine to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the good news of the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. You, O Christ. Good morning, everybody. My name is Phoebe. Um, I'm the liturgical coordinator here at UCY. Um, I'm also a second year at the Divinity School. So far this Lent, I've been thinking a lot about baptism. Um, I, like some of us, we may have been baptized when we were infants. Um, so I have no recollection of the matter, but I've been thinking about it um, and what that means this Lent. During Lent, we are called to renew our baptismal faith. This past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we celebrated a beautiful service, reminding ourselves from where we came and to where we will go. We meditated on our earthliness, our material nature and its interconnection with the universe. We meditate on these things to bring us closer to God, and to begin the Lenten journey through the wilderness, where we see temptations and sins. I was raised in the church and I got the message pretty young that we are to give something up, something that we feel is harmful to us or to others, something that we aren't proud of doing. I started questioning this practice. What's the point of giving something up if we will just take it up again? Why should we resist luxuries or unhealthy behavior? 
Why should we give up Instagram or chocolate if we are only to pick these things back up come Easter? I wrestled with these questions most of my life. I was raised in a household with addiction, so these questions especially plagued my heart. What's the point of cleansing, of purification, if we are supposedly destined for sinful living? I find myself here today in front of you all attempting to provide answers to all of these questions that I have searched for my whole life. And I don't have answers, but I do have some ideas. I'd like to take you on a journey into a personal anecdote. This is a meditation of sorts, so I inv invite you to get comfortable and turn your imaginations on. My hope is through my experience, you may enter into experiences of your own. I'm a little girl. I love the water. My mother calls me fish because I refuse to get out of the pool, even after hours of play, even though I am wrinkled as a prune. The water is comforting. The water holds me. It does nothing. It just is. And yet it provides me with so much. The water is my favorite place to be. I'm at a public pool. There are children squealing and laughing with delight. Lifeguards yelling orders, parents calling out to their children. There is so much energy and noise and commotion. I make my way to the diving board, the same one I've already jumped off of probably 30 times just that day, but I can't get enough. I am buzzing with excitement and anticipation. I know exactly what's going to happen, but I'm still just as excited as the first jump. I run down the diving board and launch myself into the air where I am suspended for just a moment, screaming with delight, limbs flailing, smile widening. And then I glide into the water. I am immediately washed over with stillness. The commotion above has come to an abrupt stop. I feel my ear canals fill up with water. My eyes can only see blobs and blurs. Everything I knew before above the water in the commotion is gone. And I am just there in the water. Everything is still. My body plummets to the bottom and then effortlessly floats up. My adrenaline is coursing through my veins. I can hear my heartbeat in my chest. I can think of nothing. I am just there. The water holds me, a loving embrace. I am comforted by the stillness of the water. The water stills me. It slows me down. The water and I are just there together. The water doesn't want anything from me, yet provides me with so much. The water does nothing. It just is. I resurface, sounds, sights, smells flood my senses. The cool air hits my face. Oxygen rushes into my lungs. My body scrambles to move towards the exit of the pool. I am once again required to do to move my body, to get out of the way, to decide what to do next, to do something. Now I recognize not everyone has the relationship that I do to swimming and high dives. So I invite you to think about a time you have felt washed over completely. May it be a glorious sunrise that washes warmth and comfort over your whole body. May it be a breeze at the top of a mountain that soothes your senses. 
When do you feel washed over completely? So utterly filled up with love, comfort, and stillness that you forget how to do and you only just be. In this country, we are taught that doing is successful and being is failing. I know I feel this intimately here at Yale and I did during my undergraduate degree and my whole life as I am a lifelong student. Doing is so ingrained in our culture, in the church, that for Lent, the very thing we ask is to not do something. Ironically, asking that you still do something, just something different, something better. Don't do this, do this, do that. We are so consumed by the idea of doing, we forget to just be. And I think baptism can remind us of this human conundrum. We cannot do stillness or peace or bliss. We cannot short circuit meditation just by not scrolling social media. We can only be still, be at peace. We have to take the plunge, of course. We have to be willing to go into the water to let the water go into and over us. And the water will take care of us. The Holy Spirit will be there. I wish I could end the story there. I wish I could say the lesson to be learned starts and ends in peaceful bliss and comfort, but the water is just the beginning. The baptism is just the start of Jesus's journey and the journey is not easy. There is still a wilderness to go through. The wilderness will try to break you. It will tell you that there is something better to be doing. There is better peace to be found. There is a better way. There is even temptation in the very practice of Lent. There is a temptation to strive for purity, for perfection. The ramifications of this temptation are vast. Purity culture has a whole host of dangerous and violent consequences, from eating disorders and body shaming to ethnic cleansing and genocide. The goal of purity is dangerous in and of itself because it is impossible. So when we inev inevitably fail to be perfect, we can be subject to immense shame. And this shame can cause us to dissociate or move into denial. Contrary to what we may have been taught, false purity is actually more dangerous than impurity. We see this in institutions or organizations on the left and on the right. They make bold claims about their benevolent missions and appear on the path to perfection, ignoring insidious wrongdoing in impressive, oppressive biases and systems. What might it look like to live in a culture where individuals and organizations acknowledge and accept their imperfection and strive to be better simply for the sake of being closer to God and not for the sake of perfection? As a church, we must remember that we cannot be perfect. We will stray and we will fall. But Lent teaches us to be accountable, to remember the ways we have erred. And sometimes we just have to sit with that and it can be uncomfortable. It can be so tempting to deny this truth and think we will someday be perfect. That's where God steps in and says, don't worry, I'm here and I love you regardless. Take the plunge, only you can take that leap off the diving board into the sunlight to the top of that mountain and God will be there. 
God is with us in all the scary recognitions we make about ourselves and our communities. So maybe this Lent and beyond this season, we need to think less about how to purify ourselves or attain perfection and focus more on being purely with ourselves and feeling God's perfect love. I challenge you to slow down, to be still, to be washed over completely. Baptism calls us to be with God, to be with the spirit. God is always here. We just have to be here too. Amen. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the heavy cross for my soul? for my soul to bear the heavy cross for my soul to god and to the lamb i will sing i will sing to god and to the lamb i will sing to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. Thank you, Gloria, Elliot, Magda, wonderful. And thank you, Phoebe, for a wonderful sermon. And I invite you into a time of prayer. So I invite you to settle into your space, whatever it is. Uh, if you wanna sit down, if you wanna put your feet on the ground, if you wanna take a deep breath, settle into your body and put aside all those things worrying you. They will still be there in a few minutes once our prayer is done. Uh, but just be in this space, as Phoebe said, uh, to dive in and join me in this prayer. Holy God, we enter your presence with praise. Even in tough times, we praise you. We praise you and we thank you for getting us through another week and bringing us together as your church today. Thanks for each one who is here today. Thank you that we've lived through another week of the pandemic. We admit we didn't think we'd still be masking and distancing and Zooming in February. But we thank you for the patience and perseverance to keep working it. Thank you for all those who've received vaccines. Thank you for the courageous healthcare workers who continue to hold and heal. Keep us hoping, caring, and careful. Thank you, God, for Lent. For some of us for whom all the time feels like Lent or we're so comfortable in Lent, 
Thank you for the season where there is room made for grief, for tears, for not feeling okay. This is a gift. And for others of us for whom all the time feels like Easter Sunday, thank you for gently reminding us that Good Friday comes first. Thank you for Jesus and his story that we, he was tempted as we are. When we are tempted by hungers, by worries, by ego, help us learn again from his faith in your provision, your protection, and your providence. Thank you, God, for understanding when we feel weak or heartsick or selfish, and for your celebration anytime we remember you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit breathing life and hope into us every day. Your spirit gives us the strength to look pain and sin and evil in the face and not be overwhelmed. Thank you that we can confront evil in the form of racism or greed or selfishness or hate or violence in ourselves and in our world and discover again a confidence that your kingdom of peace and truth is coming and is in us. Thank you that you hold open the door to turn our lives around, to repent and to return to you. Bless all those we love who are in any time of trouble. For those who are sick or undergoing any treatment. For those whose mental illness has been made so much tougher by pandemic isolation. For those who are lonely. For all who are hungry, without a home, in prison, or fleeing from war or oppression. We pray especially for our friends and neighbors in Texas who have struggled through this week with cold, with no power, with no drinking water. And we ask that help come quick. For all those who are enduring exclusion, bigotry, rejection, or violence because of who they are. Holy God, we enter your presence with praise, even in tough times. We praise we, you and we thank you that your well never runs dry, that your table is never bare, that you lay before us every day a feast, even in the presence of our enemies, and that surely goodness and mercy, mercy shall surround us all our lives. And we are home, finally home in your house forever. And now if you wish, please unmute and join me in the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, using whatever language or translation is closest to your heart. One version is in the chat. Our Father, your name will be done. Today, Deliver us from us. Thine power.
Sometimes the spirit just brings it all together. Um, what a beautiful reminder that we just have to hush and listen for how God calls each of us, knows us, invites us to be, to slow down and to be together. I give thanks, we give thanks for all of our musicians who transport us out of this place, out of this Zoom room and help us to feel the spirit and what the spirit is saying. I give thanks for Phoebe and the good word that you preached for us today and how you invited us to um, check in with our kid self and um, how God can speak then and how we can listen to that self to understand how God is moving now too. Thank you so much. Um, Elliot and Ang Herod, thank you for your beautiful scripture readings. Um, many, many thanks going around. Uh, a couple of announcements um, before we send you on your way. First, um, if you are new or you have come a couple of times, but you're thinking, oh, maybe I want to get to know this community more, we would love to have the chance to get to know you more. So please just fill out the visitor form and you can let us know if you'd like to be added to the listserv, if you'd like Ian or I to reach out to you, or if you're a student, if you'd like one of our student deacons to reach out to you. Um, after this service, we'll also have a community gathering that everyone is welcome to stick around for if you just want to stick around a bit, um, or you can stick around, we'll split everyone into small groups and say hi, and then we close together in prayer. Um, looking to the next week that's coming up, on Wednesday, um, catechesis will continue. That is our student study group that any students, undergrad or grad students are welcome to. Um, this week, very fittingly, we'll be talking about sin. Um, what is it? <laughs> What do we think about it? Uh, how, do we, how do we live um, knowing about the reality of sin in our lives? Um, uh, sometimes I think as um, progressive Christians, we don't always know how to talk about it. So we're going to try to talk about it and bring your questions. Um, also, this evening is the first week of our Lenten study um, where we're going to be looking at Christian history and our role today, especially as it relates to racism and anti-racism. Um, there's still time to sign up, so if you would like to, just let me know um, pronto, <laughs> and I will be meeting at 5 p.m. Um, on Sundays throughout the season of Lent, and we've got a great group assembled. Um, 
Also, next Sunday, we're very, very excited, is our joint worship service, an annual tradition with BK, the Black Church at Yale. Uh, the most important thing to remember is that we will be meeting at 11 a.m., not 10.30. Um, so you'll get to sleep in an extra half hour or have an ex extra half hour to finish your coffee. Um, uh, so 11 a.m., we will have our worship service with BK. Um, Orlando, their pastor, will be preaching, which will be wonderful, and we'll have music from their church and our church, and it's going to be a great time. So we'll see you next week at 11 for that. Um, any other announcements I'm forgetting? I think, I think that's good. Um, so now... Offering. Thank you. Yes. Um, so our weekly uh, tradition also um, is that we give offering as a church. And we are very blessed since we are a part of Yale um, that the offering need not go to our church. Instead, um, it's important for us that it goes to the local community. And this week, we'd like to recommend that you give your offering, whether it's $2, um, $10 or more, to the Cornell Scott Hill Center. Uh, we do sometimes have these organizations reach out and say, wow, thank you, University Church in Yale. We received a couple of donations from you. And it was, um, why? And thanks. <laughs> um, so it's nice to um, that they notice um, and they appreciate it. So um, if you're able to give, we encourage you this week to give to the Cornell Scott Hill, um, Hill Health Center. And now let us move to our time of benediction and blessing. I invite you to unmute and join me in the words we always end with that come from the prophet Micah. With what shall I come before the Lord? And now myself, myself, myself before, before God. God. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And, and what does just the Lord require of you? But to do justice. To, to do, do justice. justice. Do justice. And to love kindness. To love, to love kindness. kindness. Love kindness. kindness. Walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with our God. Amen. With our God. Amen. 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 Go now in peace, knowing that the love of God, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, which surpasses all understanding and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, go with you now and always. Amen. Amen.